from Denmark and we are on the northern Jutland Peninsula at the site of Tustrup and this is a very important Neolithic site and it's really cool and I hope you enjoy our little trip here. Right now we are hiding inside the passage grave to get away from the wind because it is really windy out there today but on the drive here we passed a golf course with people golfing so they're committed. So let me tell you a little bit about this site. This is a Neolithic site of the funnel beaker culture, the same culture that created the megalithic graves that we saw in Germany a few days ago. And this site is very unique because it has four monuments very close together and they all were related. They were built in a pretty short period of time from each other. We have a round dolmen, a passage dolmen, a passage grave, and a special structure that is sometimes called the temple or the cult house. The first structure that was built is the smallest dolmen that you see here. And then the next structure that was built is this larger dolmen that you see here. And it has this really interesting structure of these um, almost walls and a paper I read referred to them as drywall um, as the sides of this dolmen. The very last structure that was built is this huge passage grave. When these structures were excavated, they really didn't find many human remains in them, so their primary use did not seem to be for burials. Uh, the site seemed to have a ritual purpose, and that goes along with the function of this cult house. Now, there were only 12 of these cult houses in this part of Europe, and they were all deliberately destroyed. And we really don't know what they did in them, but they weren't for burial. Now this site that all of these monuments are on was just a pasture. Nobody lived here. We find no artifacts of human habitation on this hill. So this was a site that was purely meant for monuments. Were they destroyed as Christianity moved in? Mm -hmm. no. no, before that, long before that, okay. 3,000 years before Christianity started, the destruction of the site appears to coincide with the arrival of what is called the pitted ware culture. And so uh, maybe there was a, a cultural change at that point. And so the cult house was a wooden building, but it had some um, stone structure to it. And the house was deliberately burned down and then they paved over the site with flat stones and the passage grave was deliberately closed off. I mean, they purposely destroyed this site and we don't really know why. This little Bebe dolmen over here appears to have been the first one that was built, but it seems to have not been used as a tomb. Uh, no bodies were found in either this dolmen or the larger round dolmen, but the passage grave seems to have been used as a tomb. And the capstone of this dolmen is missing because it was probably taken to be broken up and used for building material in the 19th century. But there is this rock all by itself, a few feet away from the small dolmen. So this could have been a capstone. I don't know how they know it wasn't. 
So maybe this was the capstone for this dolmen. So this is the cult house or temple. And so this was a wooden structure. And there were 12 of these in this area at one time. This one is unique though, because of all of these stones that it had. Most of the other ones didn't have this many stones, but the cult house was deliberately burned down by the people who built it. All of the structures on this site seem to have been built within a period of a couple of hundred years. So they seem to have been built by the same clan or family. We don't really know about the kinship uh, relations of the people that lived here because we found so few human remains. But it appears to have been a place for a local person of power and influence to have a site that everybody could gather together. And there seems to have been a lot of competition between different groups who were starting to get some uh, extra resources and extra influence. And so they were almost like um, a building competition, maybe, of like who can build the better monuments. We don't have accurate carbon dates of these structures, but it's estimated that they were built from around between 3300 BC and 3100 BC, and that's when they were destroyed. The passage grave was originally covered with dirt. Um, it's been partially excavated, so you have to imagine this being completely covered with dirt, and it wasn't open like this. So did it probably have another capstone on it then? Oh, probably, yeah. There was probably a missing capstone. And we know that stone cutters in the 19th century, um, particularly, would take <laughs> big capstones off of dolmens and use them. These were built in a short window of time, archeologically speaking. I mean, it was several generations of, of time went by that these were being built. And all used as burial chambers, except no. for maybe the cult house? They don't, um, well, they know the cult house was not. They have found some human remains, but they don't know if they date to when they were built. Um, or, and they're not even complete bodies. A lot of times um, in these tombs, you only find certain bones in the tombs um, because they had been moved from elsewhere. And um, we really don't know what they were doing with the bodies at this time. The passage grave is the only one that was used as a tomb, this large structure. The other structures here do not seem to be, have been used. Now, this isn't the only place that they would bury people. Um, they did have single flat graves where we find bodies from this time period. Um, so those were probably people without any kind of status. It seems to have been people with more of a higher social status would be buried in these megalithic structures. So they would, um, they also left um, pottery in these structures and that's the main way that we date them based on the type of pottery. The pottery that you find in these megalithic graves seems to have been broken deliberately before it was put in the grave. And we don't know what that's about, but it's not, it doesn't seem to be that they would place an entire pot in these megalithic structures. I would assume that it's like symbolic of the person not being there anymore and some representation of a use and a person and a soul or something like that. I don't know. No idea yeah. what that now they're an empty vessel or well, something. Well, I'm going to use my weird Western bias and say they probably thought that there was a soul in a person, and when they broke the vessel, it was like the person dying. Could be. I think that people don't have a real appreciation 
of how sophisticated people were at this time living in this area. I think people think that they were, I don't know, living in caves or something, but actually the megalithic structures are the least impressive thing that people were doing at this era. Because at this time, people were living in houses that were made of wood, of course, but they were wooden houses that were made without any kinds of nails, you know, no metal involved in the construction of a house. Like, can you make a wooden house <laughs> with no nails? In Sweden, we know that they had elaborate flint mines. People from further south on the continent started moving, the funnel beaker people started moving up into the Scandinavian region and they found a rich source of flint in southern Sweden. And so they had these elaborate flint mines with many, many chambers. And it wasn't just like open pit mining, no. They were digging mine shafts. So you had an entire economy of people who did nothing but build ladders, build rope. You had to have people to feed all these people that are mining all this flint. It was a whole economy based on flint mining in some regions. And then they were trading that flint all over Europe. And then they were exchanging, you know, for other goods from other regions. There were elaborate networks of trade and communications all throughout Europe at this time. But I don't know, I think people think that 5,000 years ago, people were eating raw meat and bashing each other over the head with clubs instead of making like elaborate mines and elaborate structures and houses. And I think that we really are doing people of the past a disservice by thinking that, oh, well, that had to have been like aliens to make this. When really, if you consider what it takes to mine flint, stacking some rocks up is easy. Because with the flint mines, they know that certain shafts had to be refilled before you could make another shaft. That requires quite a sophisticated sense of engineering and ingenuity, which is where the word engineer comes from, by the way. So people were really smart five, 6,000 years ago. They weren't stupid. If you ever heard of Otzi the Iceman, or Otzi in German dialect, he was a Copper Age, but also Neolithic Copper Age from right around the same time period that this monument was built. And we went to this cute little village in Austria, which is near where Otzi was from, and they have a little recreated Neolithic village, and I'll show you some pictures that we took when we visited there a few years ago. And as you see, they had wooden houses that look like something you could live in now. They had animals. They grew crops. They grew wheat. They grew beans. But people living that kind of lifestyle were contemporary to these megalithic structures in Northern Europe. And when you look at their little village, you really see that they really weren't that primitive. And he had a bow and arrow. He had an ax. He had medicinal mushrooms. He had fire starting mushroom. He had a birch bucket that he kept embers to start a fire in. He wore clothing that was sewn. He had shoes that were made by a shoemaker. Like these, these people were sophisticated. And I don't think that we do a good job of educating people of what life was really like five, 6,000 years ago. It's, it's remarkable how close all these sites are to each other. The four are probably within the size of a football field, either American or European. Yeah, um, in this area though, the monuments tend to be a little more tightly clustered than you find in other parts of Europe. Like, um, and it's not like you would never find clusters of monuments because when we were in France, remember there were a couple areas that would have a few dolmens around. But in this region, you do tend to find monuments clumped together. And remember on Rugen at Lankan Granitz, there were all of those dolmens right very very close together so that is typical of this region and it's theorized that it was um that they were sort of a uh, show again displays of some kind of a wealth or a power um competitive with somebody else's cluster of monuments down the road well thank you for joining me on this very windy cold day 
at the Danish site of Tustrup. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more history and travel videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!